This Twit News is brought to you from our LastPass studios. Stay in control when it comes to your company's access points and authentication. LastPass makes enterprise-level security simple for your remote workforce. Check out lastpass.com slash twit to learn more. Podcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. This is Twit News number 354, recorded Tuesday, May 19th, 2020, Microsoft Build 2020 Keynote. This Twit News is brought to you by LastPass. Prepare for the unexpected in your business with LastPass, trusted by over 17 million users and 61,000 businesses worldwide, including us. Visit lastpass.com slash twit to find out how they can help you. This is Twit News Special number 354, recorded Tuesday, May 19th, 2020, Microsoft Build Keynote. Hello, everybody. Leo Laporte here. Micah Sargent is joining me because he's got to be here in about 10 minutes anyway for, <laughs> for iOS it's, today. Please, it's <laughs> Micah Sargent today. <laughs> well, and, you know, normally I don't think of you as a, as a Windows user, except that you do have that fabulous Microsoft Laptop 3. I do. Which Surface we, Laptop 3. It's, uh, can, or I almost said Canary. It's not Canary. It's Elvis. It's El Ebis because it's Blue Alcantara. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we call it the Blue Suede Laptop. Mike is also kind of, um, you've been hosting Windows Weekly when I'm gone. And so you've become kind of the, uh, the Windows noob. I am the Windows noob and a happy Windows noob, yeah. you know? So this is the first uh, of a number of developer conferences that will be streamed instead of presented live. Google decided not to do Google I.O. Uh, that was last week. That was just disappeared. Microsoft Build is this week. And next month, it'll be Apple's WWDC also streamed live. We are going to go in a few minutes to the keynotes. Satya Nadella will give a short 20-minute keynote. Uh, then they do a, a thing, and they've done this in the years past, where they bring some, uh, I can't remember if it's high school or college kids in to demonstrate their inventions and uh, vie for some prizes. And then if we're lucky, uh, we'll get to Scott Hanselman and Scott Guthrie. The two Scots are doing presentations as well. We'll keep, we'll stay with it as long as we can. Normally, we begin uh, iOS today at 9 a.m. Well, normally we begin at more like 10 a.m. So Yeah, <laughs> we've got a little bit of time. <laughs> we get a little bit of time. And so Micah has kindly, kindly agreed to get up a little bit early and uh, and keep me company today. Right now, it's uh, Donna Sakar, it looks like. And uh, let's let's check in with the, uh, something's going on. Yeah, there's Donna Sakar. She used to be... Uh, Head of the Insider program. I'm not sure what Don is doing these days. To talk through the Modern Developer cool Toolkit mm -hmm. with GitHub, Visual Studio, Windows, and much, mm -hmm. much more. So I know an online dev squid and cage match is not exactly the build. I'm expecting uh, Sachit today but, to talk about you know, this is what we've uh, open source software. Yesterday, Microsoft admitted that we were wrong about open source software. And in fact, there was a big graphic on the stage, uh, Microsoft Hearts open source. <laughs> but it's, this is after calling Linux a cancer, right? A cancer. That's, uh, of course, um, what uh, Steve Ballmer, the former CEO of Microsoft, uh, said. Brad Smith, uh, speaking yesterday, said uh, Microsoft was on the wrong side of history when open source exploded at the beginning of the century. <clears throat> I think exploded is not the best choice of words, but okay. And I can <laughs> say that about me personally. This was at a recent MIT event. Uh, the good news is, Smith added, if life is long enough, you can learn that you need to change. Microsoft is shipping a full Linux kernel in Windows 10, uh, the uh, H1, 20H1 update, which will come out later this month, actually any day now. It uses the Chromium open source project uh, as its browser engine from Edge. Uh, and, and of course, Linux is the number one operating system on Microsoft's Azure. So uh, Microsoft has definitely changed its tune. Uh, traditionally the maker of the number one closed source operating system in the world and still number one. Um, maybe they maybe they're opening up. Let's uh, let's go right now to the beginning of the uh, conference because it's eight twenty in the uh, West Coast. The and morning. they're doing. Some, uh, see, look at that. There's so much touch going on. I just I haven't done a lot of touching with my Surface laptop. Just seen a short video. 
What if Satya will be in his kitchen? That'd be kind of cool. Oh, that would be cool. I, somehow I doubt it. Microsoft Build 2020, the first virtual developer conference. Good morning Microsoft. and welcome to Build. We're living through extraordinary times. I want to first extend my deepest sympathies to all who have been impacted by COVID-19 and deep gratitude to everyone working so tirelessly to get us through this crisis. While it's hard not to be together in person, I'm comforted by this community being gathered here virtually. I'll Bill save is you one a Google of my search. favorite events of the year. RGV2 CW doesn't mean anything. It looks like I they're... looked it up too. <laughs> <laughs> it's something probably uh, build and such as uh, a special thing for his kids or something. While this year feels yeah, different, I can't find it anywhere. Coming together <laughs> as a community is more important than ever. There are tens and thousands of you tuned in from dozens of countries around the world. It's fantastic to see. Our industry has been called upon to help address the world's most acute needs through this crisis. And I'm proud of how all of you have raised the game and been there when the world needed you the most. Traditionally, these are serving as those digital first responders talks more than the yes. first responders Do you think that Microsoft build frame game. behind him is real or is that digitally I added? I think that's real. Point of light amidst this crisis. His, uh, Seeing developers uh, come together with those on the front lines. I like those shelves. You know, Johns Hopkins yeah. University epidemiologists and software developers created that canonical dashboard to track the spread of COVID-19. Adaptive biotech Technologies is using the cloud compute and AI to decode the immune system's response to the virus. In the United Kingdom, a cross section of manufacturers adjusted their production lines to build ventilators for the NHS, using mixed reality to guide workers through the process. The NBA is using the power of the cloud and Xbox to engage fans and maintain the joy of the game. Role of developers is more important than ever. Already, we've seen you know, something like two years worth of digital transformation in just two months. And we've seen how critical digital technology is in the three phases of this crisis, from emergency response to the recovery phase to the reimagining the world going forward. Every organization will increasingly need the ability at a moment's notice to remote everything from manufacturing to sales to customer support. These vision talks are very slippery, very hard to get a hold of. And I don't know from how the if it's the way to a virus, to uh, in a Mr. Nadella and thinks or talks, and they will but it, to it, be able to it's just very difficult to, 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 enable <laughs> grasp anything to pull from anything it. from it. Yeah. yeah. And in fact, uh, Paul and Mary Jo have been known to sort of uh, translate the vision yeah. talks after yeah. after they've completed. We're listening for certain keywords. ...to empower every person and organization on the planet to achieve more. So that's a very and different mission than a traditional Microsoft mission, to empower every person on the planet to achieve more is exactly the opposite of what Microsoft's <laughs> mission statement used to be, which is Windows in every on every computer in every office at home. These are the core of all that we do and build. Over the next couple of days, you're going to hear about this new opportunity across the entire tech stack. And I want to give you a bit of a thumbnail for it. Let's start with professional developers. GitHub is the home for developers. It's where developers build software together. And of course, the home of open source. 50 million developers use GitHub and they're more active than ever. Wait, do they own it? And Visual Studio Code is oh, the yes. most popular code That's right. editor. Yeah. And the it was a, months, quite disruptive in the open source community when they bought it, but it's settled down now. I think you know, people many understand now. Measures Microsoft's here, Microsoft's pull requests, it. pushes, collaboration. The adoption of CI/CD now with that GitHub that Actions to drive both quality uh, has been and agility. Uh, so critical to the crisis. Sachin and Adela himself changed it when he give you new became CEO. I think I remember that change. Yeah. I, I wrote an article about it. Did you really? Wow. For yeah. Bringing together the best of GitHub, Visual Studio, and Azure to help you to go from idea to code and code to cloud. You already see this in action. 
right? Codespaces is a great example. It's coming to GitHub, allowing developers to quickly provision a dev box in the cloud, pre-installed with Visual Studio Code, and fully configured That's for your dev combination stack. of yeah. Azure and, and GitHub. Any device, just I just saw they're adding browser. Azure to a uh, image sensor right uh, for, I think, mobile phones, which is faster, easy, sort of artificial intelligence, machine learning. Yeah, Sony's on, sending us so selling a smart chip that does the AI on the chip on the bill, sensor you know check on quality security checks and then view even the app live in Azure uh, with WSL2 Windows is the best this developer goes up against Google's code apps, engine which has been Linux, very popular with developers and graphical interfaces um, applications at, uh, Amazon's lumberyard and various Linux other code alongside Win32 tools first class uh, so it's great to see the progress the other area that I'm very excited about, and for the first time we're going to talk about this at a developer conference as another member of the tool chain, is Power Platform. There are 3.5 million people using Power Platform today to create applications, bots, workflows, dashboards. And Power Platform is a tool for end users to build low-code, no-code applications and customize and extend. Low-code, no-code. Yeah, There's the keywords. This is an enterprise uh, platform, traditionally business intelligence. Keep not such up. I'm not. For pro devs, right? ISVs can expose their applications through Power Platform connectors, and pro devs can do the same using this as an extensibility this framework, flow, so BI, that citizen developers can amplify power their apps. work. And we've seen tremendous momentum label. during the month of March. We saw a 50% increase in first-time Power Apps users. And this year, we've seen a 70% increase in professional developers and 70,000 organizations starting to use Power Apps. From New York to Washington, states are using Power Platform to inform citizens, providing these self-screening tools, tracking critical resources and supplies. And you'll hear more about the advances in Power Platform broadly, but there are two in particular I want to call out. First is how we are bringing RPA, or Robotic Process Automation, connectivity to legacy apps and services with our acquisition of SoftMotive. And the second, how we are adding new professional developer extensibility to Power Virtual Agents, which is really getting used extensively even through this COVID crisis. The next building block I want to talk about is that distributed infrastructure, the fabric that every developer needs for their applications. Today, over 95% of the Fortune 500 use Azure, and now more than ever organizations in every industry are relying on Azure to support their critical workloads, from healthcare triage with AI-assisted bots, to digital twins in manufacturing, to e-commerce and retail. This infrastructure enables you. And of course, Microsoft to Azure famously beat Amazon for the Pentagon's Jedi contract, a ten billion dollar contract computer. over ten years. We have That's right. Amazon sued. Regions, more than any other uh, the judge provider. did not seem and too receptive to Amazon's lawsuit. That extends to the edge with all the it's flexibility you need, from Azure Edge zones for 5G to Azure Sphere for secure IoT. Over the next two days, you'll see how we're innovating at every layer from edge to hybrid to data and AI. We've always led in with hybrid computing. Azure Arc is the first control plane for built for a multi-cloud, multi-edge world. And today we're taking it further with Azure Arc enabled for Kubernetes. And at the data layer, Azure is the first cloud with limitless data and analytics capabilities that can deliver a cloud-native data estate for every organization. We literally rebuilt and reimagined the cl cloud data estate using the new memory hierarchy of the cloud. And today, you'll see Azure Synapse Link, a new architecture that helps developers do live analytics on real-time transactional data. Right, Bringing Cosmos DB and Synapse together is just, I think, going to be a pattern that we're going to see increasingly. In AI, we have the most comprehensive portfolio of tools, frameworks, and infrastructure. You'll hear about updates to Azure Cognitive Services for speech, the bot framework, from Project Bonsai, which brings intelligence to physical systems. Uh, we will also have new capabilities in Azure Machine Learning to better understand the interpretability of models, protect using differential privacy, control, and the auditability of data as well as models, right? This is all very critical for building responsible AI. And finally, we'll share the progress with the world's 
first AI supercomputer in the cloud. This is something that we started last uh, build, and we've made tremendous progress. Everything from the infrastructure to large-scale multimodal models acting as platforms themselves that other developers can use. Moving to Microsoft 365, we are building the world's productivity cloud as a people-centric, multi-device, multi-sense experience. We've seen tremendous Makes scale sense. and intensity of usage with Microsoft 365. There are over 75 million daily active users of Teams and 1 billion monthly active devices running Windows 10 today. And moreover, we've seen 75% increase in the minutes spent on Windows 10 in a month. This translates to a so rich RGV opportunity could either for stand for Rio Grande Valley, new rail guided vehicle, of their remote new gate valve, or Let's start a team. it is a the well known for your apps. Every time acronym teams, for Ram Gopal Verma, a well known Bollywood director. Case, could it be Microsoft is making an announcement about its film ambitions? <laughs> I don't know. It's fact, launching Microsoft TV Plus. I don't integrating third party The CW to me will always be a TV network, but I, I just don't know and what it's We're taking for. this to the next level. With Teams and the Fluid Framework, you can build Teams apps with new collaborative canvas, right? Collaboration now is first class in any application you build. With Teams and Power Platform, you can build and embed powerful apps, bots, that low code, workflows, no dashboards that, uh, for business process with one-click you know, add to Teams experience. And I think it's going to completely change how Frontline in particular <laughs> uses Teams. And with Teams and Visual Studio, professional developers have the ability to now have integrated workflows to build apps and Teams. And now to Windows, right? In, at Build, Windows has always been the most important platform for us. And we see more. more developers across right. a variety of frameworks use Windows as a dev box. And now we're unifying the Windows platform, allowing for seamless integration across both Win32 and UWP APIs using Project Reunion. It's an this exciting announcement. Windows and, you know, I'm 10X. looking forward to what you as developers can do with, uh, with Project Reunion. And with Windows Virtual Desktop, you can now stream your apps built for the B Windows 10 install base beyond the 1 billion Windows 10 install base because of streaming and its reach. This is just a snapshot of what we will share with you over the Project next Project Reunion is their new hours. initiative to uh, allow These developers to tools, write once and target all to build ah, Windows devices. All so gotcha. existing Win32 UWP. Point, as developers, you have that opportunity as well as a responsibility to define what should be rebuilt, what should be reimagined, and what should be left behind. And we are already seeing developers we'll probably hear have a lot this about impact. that uh, this week. At Folding at home is... It's an amazing project. It's a distributed computing project that harnesses the collective power of millions of volunteers to aid COVID-19 research efforts. Let's take a look. We know it's it's a nice plug for folding at home. This is good. Uh, yeah. The unfortunate experience of losing most of my vision due to immaculate degeneration. One of the things that drew me to studying protein dynamics is that it's something that nobody can see. That really levels the playing field for me. If we can understand how proteins fold, then we should also be able to understand how they misfold in Alzheimer's disease or how they malfunction in cancer. Folding at Home is basically a big computer cluster where people around the world volunteer to run simulations for us and send the data back to our servers. We can take problems that would have taken 500 years to complete on a, a single desktop and start solving them within a matter of six months. It feels amazing that an ordinary person like me can help experts hopefully cure illnesses that are uncurable you today. see her power bill. With the <laughs> current immediacy of the, the pandemic, we brought the whole thing to bear on COVID-19. So over the last two months, we've gone from having around 30,000 to 4 million devices running holding at home. Generating Microsoft has been partnering with us as we scale up in such a short period of time. GitHub started running our client on some of their hardware, wow. and we're making use of Azure resources to run some of the large simulations. We've already uncovered a couple of these novel binding sites in the virus and are starting wow. to into the structural details that provide new means to target these proteins. 
That's pretty cool. Yeah. Wonder Welcome if they were using Greg. Skype. It's great to talk to you on Teams. It's really <laughs> inspirational teams. to see the progress you've uh, made just in such your a question. short time. It's really Thank you, remarkable. Satya. Uh, maybe you can start by telling us more about the technology behind Folding at Home. Uh, so teams Folding have at Home virtual is backgrounds. a distrib distributed computing project for understanding all the moving parts of proteins and how we can control them. The, the basic idea behind the technology is to build a what is essentially a map of the different structures that a protein can adopt as it goes about its function and has all of these moving parts. Uh, and so we, we've called out on the internet for citizen scientists around the, the world to contribute their computing power to running simulations of how all the atoms in a protein move over time. And on the server side, we collect all that data and build up these maps and identify the interesting features like new therapeutic targets. Right, so this is where you're going to start using more some of the Azure and GitHub, from what I understand, you're going to even use that to sort of go to the next phase of this. Exactly, exactly. So Azure has been huge. So, so we've got these active learning algorithms that let us focus our compute resources on the structures that are most useful to us. Uh, running on Azure, and along with that, running servers that let us uh, collect all that data and productively engage with all of our volunteers. We have a real opportunity to impact COVID-19, but this is also a general platform that we can bring to bear on Alzheimer's disease and antibiotic resistance and cancer uh, and, and a long list of other things. So I'm, I'm excited about the engagement we're getting. Oh, that's fantastic to hear, Greg. And how can people get involved uh, in your project? Yeah, there's a wide variety of ways. So the first thing is to go to foldingathome.org slash start dash folding, and you can download our software and start contributing your personal computing power. Uh, but if you want to get more involved, there are a variety of ways. So we have a huge need for developers right now and, and to help build out this platform and scale it in response to all the interest that COVID-19 has generated and the, the opportunity we have to, to make a difference. Yeah, no, tremendous. Thank you so much, Greg. It's such a great example of how you and a small group of developers and scientists working together can make such a big difference. So thank you for sharing your story and good luck going forward. And we love to be you know, involved deeply with you. Thank you. I'm, I'm excited and look forward to it. It's incredible how a small group of developers and scientists working together can make such a huge difference. And reflecting on this power of community, music has always been a unifying force in connecting us. If and he it's brings on Bono, to see musicians oh my God, at no. the San Francisco Conservatory of Music or has a kid playing a working piano together like last time. to teach and perform virtually. <laughs> Let's take a look. This is the San Francisco Conservatory of Music. I picked up violin when I was three. What really got me practicing was the idea that, oh, I get to go perform. I get to go connect with an audience. And we know Before that symphony. Before COVID came oh. along, San Francisco Conservatory of Music was <laughs> teaching in person for over 100 years. So we were given a task of putting all of our classes and performances online symphony. Oh. in a matter of weeks. Mike and I were there a few months ago. Our last concert ever. Oh my God, that was our last concert. The Vegas yeah. Stream software to achieve this mission. It allows us to Next bring to Microsoft B. Teams video calls into the software. You can take data that's in our organization, pull it into Vegas Stream, and create your titles, polling, chat messages, and then broadcast this out to the world. That's a, a Sony product. That's interesting. We love the in person interaction and the feeling of the audience. I've been using Teams to connect with my audience who I can't see in person. It's really amazing to look at a screen and see all the faces. Even though it's been a challenging time, I think it's a really exciting time and seeing how education is going to be changed for the better. So that was basically Todor, uh, streaming from teams, teams to teams. Yeah, to teach. Yeah. It's a huge challenge. Gotcha. Uh, Ali, maybe we can start with you. How are you currently using technology to address this issue? So when my calendar first kind of evaporated, I started doing live stream performances. And I realized pretty quickly that something was missing. I realized that the thrill of performing for me is not being seen but seeing my audience. And so the beauty That's when I started of to use Zooms, I mean, performing teams. <laughs> is to look out and see in these windows, the reaction and 
the collaborative effort I make with my audience. Yeah, no, that's fantastic. And so, Tudor, why did you choose to build this app and what was that inspiration? And obviously, you know, you chose to integrate it with Teams and Ali already talked a little it's bit about they're why pitching that teams is a platform a for developers to, to build design apps on. All about. Well, I'll start with something she just said. That's inspiration that power is to enable people like her, to enable people to effectively communicate through video. So it's very exciting that this has, been, has come together. When we talk about Teams and Microsoft, Microsoft 365 offers a very rich source of of highly useful, relevant information, everything from spreadsheets, notes, uh, who's on my team, who's, what's being said on chat, what kind of reactions do people have? And then the Microsoft Graph APIs give us a quick, intelligent access to this data so that people like Ali can then communicate effectively. But it's really exciting when you combine that with the power of Teams, which is the core communication infrastructure in Microsoft, so that you're able to effectively bring together this kind of communication that she needs to be able to do. No, I think that beautifully captures it because it's not just the one team session. It's what happens before the session, after the session, and all of it being constructed together. And maybe, Ali, how has this benefited you as a performer? Has this new medium of instruction performance changed uh, how you approach it? Yeah, definitely. It's um, kind of this new frontier of... Um, performing to any place in the world now. It's its opened up opportunities that I wouldn't have thought of usually as, as somebody who performs mostly in person. Uh, suddenly I'm using the medium of video and live streaming performance in, in ways that I, I never even considered possible before. No, that's tremendous. Thanks so much, Ali and Tudor, for what you're doing and inspiring us to think about this new medium uh, in new ways. Thank you so much and have a fantastic build. I'm looking forward to watching alongside you. Nice. Why? I guess the um, performers are in color and the audience is in black and white, or no? I don't know. I think that the music is bringing color to everyone. Oh, it is. You're right. They were black and white, and now they're color. <laughs> you nailed it. All right. So apparently that concludes Satya Nadella's <laughs> remarks. Hmm. Um, okay. You can continue showing us because they're going to go now to the Innovators Forum. They did this last year. And it's, it's an interesting and cool thing. I think we'll stick with it for a little bit. I, I would love to get this uh, through this to the Scott Hanselman presentation because I'm very curious. Microsoft announced some new things. Satya Nadella referred to Project Reunion. Uh, this is an attempt to unify the uh, uh, UWP, which is the Universal Windows Platform, and Win32, Win32, which really pretty pretty much should have died a long time ago, but Microsoft refuses to let any technology die because of so many uh, legacy users. Uh, but of course, that's led to fragmentation. So the idea is Project Reunion will allow developers to write once, uh, modernize their apps uh, using C++ or .NET or React Native and create one app that will run everywhere Windows runs. So UWP uh, was a, a, an attempt to do this, which kind of flopped. And uh, now they're going to try something new, which is Project Reunion. So this is uh, an attempt to create a system to develop on for developers. And, and I think their hope is developers who are writing Win32 apps or have Win32 apps or UWP apps will move to Project Reunion and keep them modern. So uh, the Imagine Cup is a fun event, and we can watch a little bit of this. He's my co-host, Corey Sanders. He's also the corporate vice president for Microsoft Solutions. And we are coming to you from the safety of our homes. You remember we got sucked into this last States. year for about half an hour. <laughs> the impact of this moment in time will no doubt be felt and discussed uh, for generations to come. It's our hope that it also provides a new sense of inspiration to innovate even more for the good of all. At Microsoft, we take great pride in our mission to empower every person and every <laughs> sure about the camera on the angle switch, to but... achieve more. And never has this quest felt more important 
than it does today. That's why we're so proud to continue to host the Imagine Cup, which helps student developers achieve their dreams of making a positive impact. What started as thousands of teams competing has been narrowed down to the six finalists. They're really trying today. to give it some production value, Whether it's even much though it's needed solutions for mental basically health, a Zoom call. <laughs> or a new tool in the fight against misinformation online. All the it is interesting to see what these, uh, ideas these kids have come up with. I know I'm excited to yeah, see how absolutely. this all I think they're college kids. And who takes home the championship. I can't remember if they're college or high school. And whoever that is will have earned their place at the top, having outlasted thousands of teams from more than 170 countries. Impressive to say the least. And here they are, the finalists for this year's Imagine Cup World Championship, the winners of their regional competitions, all with varying experiences and motivation that led them here. Tremor Vision Ooh, started off as just a hackathon project six months ago. Um, and how far we've come in the Imagine Cup is really an honor. The Imagine Cup journey has been challenging, but so is everything else that is worth doing. Our inspiration as people who have lost their voice due to cancer. One of our teammates has a relative who's dealing with Alzheimer's disease, and we wondered why the today's technology doesn't really offer as much as it should be for a disease as dangerous as this one. I actually lost one of my close friends to suicide. This is actually about wasn't sure 20 times the better than the Shark Tank format really they used last year. The <laughs> so well. I'm actually, they did Shark Tank? Basically, that's what they did, yeah. Uh, oh, refining yeah. our judges in a panel the and the kids had to stuff present is kind of bugging us not being able to present in person is definitely has been a factor so we're trying to look at it as an opportunity we never really had this much time just to sit at home and do stuff and to work the first world final team for the 2020 regional final is Team Redwalls from Tunisia, the Knights from Kenya, Deep Tector for the United States, Tremor Vision in the United States, Team Hollow from Hong Kong it's really Winning great. Winning the Imagine Cup would be a life-changing moment for me. I mean, holding the flag of my country up would be a huge honor for me and my team. Winning this Imagine Cup will tell the Africans and the rest of the world that we actually have the capabilities of doing great things. The journey has been fun. If I may add, hella fun. <laughs> well, I'm excited to see what our finalists have hella to share fun. and thrilled to introduce the panel of esteemed judges they'll be presenting to. They've competed in over 50 different tech competitions and hackathons around the globe and are currently part of the Intel Software Innovators Program. Joining us from Los Angeles, please welcome sisters Penelope and America Lopez, AKA the Cyber Code Twins. That's cute. Next, she innovated her way through the likes of IBM and MasterCard before taking over as the CEO of Reboot Representation, where she focuses on the improvement of underrepresented women graduating with computing degrees. From New York City, welcome Duana Franklin Davis. And he is well known for his efforts in protecting customer privacy and being the driving force in Microsoft's pledge to being carbon negative by 2030. Please welcome the president of Microsoft, Brad Smith. Let's find out what you're most excited about for this year's Imagine Cup. Dewana, let's start with you. I am so excited. There are so many amazing teams. Congratulations to all of you for making it this far in the competition, innovation for good. So all of the, the efforts that you guys have worked on so far are going to make such a difference. And I just can't wait to see how you guys are going to bring it. Cybercode twins, Penelope and America, what are you most looking forward to? I got to look at this. Like This is like a hackathon that's on a marathon. And we're so excited to see the students <laughs> rising up to make an impact to yeah. where they believe innovation is needed most. Yeah, so very excited to see your, all your guys' projects. Now that's pair program. Cyber Code Twins, I love that's your energy. Awesome. Brad, what are you hoping to see today from these young developers? Well, I'm really excited to see what you all have created, the innovation. I think it's a special day. This is literally an opportunity to see people and creations that connect the world. I wish we were in the same room together but it's pretty amazing to all be connected together this way. Well, it's time to get our game on. Here's a look at how the competition will play out. 
lightning round. Our six finalists will each have one minute to impress our judges beyond what they already know of the product. So this is essentially From the same format, but I have to say it's, it's a lot better with less of the hosts and more of the teams <laughs> and the judges. Yeah. Presentations. The final votes will be tallied based on their use of technology, consideration of diversity, inclusion, and accessibility, as well as innovation, concept, and feasibility. And the world champion will take home $100,000 in cash, $50,000 in Azure grants, and to top it all off, a mentoring session with the CEO of Microsoft, Satya oh, Nadella. Neat. Team Hollow, Pro. your time begins now. Our app monitors your general lifestyle habits that affect your well-being. While this is challenging to present to and teams is, or Skype. Is, that's tough. Azure, yeah, that would be oh, nerve-wracking when something would go wrong. To join Hollow and our professionals on our mission to make mental health care smart and accessible. Every three seconds, someone in our world is affected by Alzheimer's. That is why we created I Remember, a first-of-its-kind mobile solution designed for the well-being of both the patients and their caregivers. Today, I remember is a solution for our parents, but tomorrow it could be for us. Fake videos called deepfakes are becoming increasingly easy to generate with AI. The oh, that's from my university. That's Mizzou. Nice. Yeah. Built from the ground up with Azure Cloud Services, Detector is the first and only website with the that's how they say Azure in the Missouri Azure. <laughs> Detector using AI by AI. We present to you the reading bot. Powered by artificial intelligence, it is an autonomous mobile robot that makes reading right. safe by being hardiside free, economical, efficient, and it is simple to use. The reading it. bot will solve it's agriculture's so biggest problem one robot at a time. We made Sarix, a hands free wearable device, run on Azure to generate these vibration patterns from voice recordings. Sarex enables you to sound like yourself again. 10 million worldwide are affected by Parkinson's disease. Although there's no cure, treatments can manage symptoms, but are most effective when Parkinson's is detected early. That's why we built Tremor Vision, a web-based platform supported by Azure Cognitive Services that empowers you with reliable means of detecting early onset Parkinson's, Tremor Vision, giving you a head start in your fight against Parkinson's. This is great. I love this. Nice work, everybody. Judges, it's up to you. Dewana, <laughs> let's start with you. Who do you want to know more about and why? The team that I think I want to hear more solutions about would be Team Tremor Vision. Um, it's something that impacts my mom directly. I want to hear more about how your solution will help impact that. Identical twins, America and Penelope, while there are technically two of you, today you are operating as a set and have one combined <laughs> vote. Which of the five remaining finalists are going to be moving on? And what was it about their solution that caught your attention? We're, we're always in need of more uh, medical innovation. We're happy to choose. Uh, uh, moving forward will be snakes. snakes. Am I pronouncing this correctly? Sorry, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so excited to hear more. Oh, so this is the first right. sort of who will be the last team cut. cut. I, I'm in the unenviable position of disappointing three groups and uh, <laughs> an exciting one. But I'd like to hear more about Hollow. I was uh, really excited by the way you've worked with two uh, NGOs that uh, appear to be real professionals in the mental health space. So I'm interested in learning more. What an exciting so beginning to this year's Imagine Cup. Focused. Mm -hmm. So a huge congratulations to Team Hollow, Team Cyrinx, as well as, of course, Team Tremor Vision oh, for advancing tears. to the next That's stage. So well done, everyone. And to the other teams, a huge thank you for sharing your inspiring solutions. Yeah, we didn't get the longer uh, presentations that we got last year. The world. Corey, we are down to three teams who are ready to rumble and show Brad, Dewana, America, and Penelope what they've got. Team Maybe Hollow, that's what this you're is. up okay. first. Here's a quick look at how they prepared for this moment. Unlike other mood tracking apps, we're innovating beyond the self-reports, which may be inconsistent and biased. With the help of- Let's go, Hollow. Your slides are absolutely beautiful. But in a three minute presentation, they're way too much. Trim it down significantly to just like the high level core pieces. Could you give just a little bit more of like the technology behind it? Wow, what a difference a week makes. It's unique and it can really impact lives. Woo! Come on, Matthias, let's do this. 
Well, let's see how that <laughs> practice pays off for them. Team Hollow, your time begins now. Hi, I'm Cameron, this is Piyush, and we're Hollow. 500 million worldwide have mental illness, but everyone has mental health needs. I'm getting nervous. With millions of kids around the world, <laughs> like my friend Mark, that could potentially take their lives, and especially under isolation with COVID-19, current solutions aren't sufficient. We utilize services from Azure to help us achieve the detection and data handling process. We provide you with an early intervention tool, understanding your condition on our simple dashboard, suggesting what may be affecting your mental health to an accuracy of 86%. Your therapy path is actually automatically adjusted through AI, depending on how intense or serious your symptoms may be. This model is actually trained by the professionals that we work with and improves over time using the big data that we have access to. Checking our models with trained counselors and psychologists at University of Hong Kong, whilst having the privacy in mind and not as an afterthought, or complying with a lot of international privacy ordinances. So for our proof of concept, we've gotten support from Hong Kong's entrepreneurship hub, and gain some user interaction with over 300 users from our two partner mental health NGOs. And we'll actually be charging these NGOs as a software as a service for 99 US dollars per month per staff, giving them access to a web app platform. And in the future, we're looking at scaling through multiple verticals powered by Azure, equipped with comprehensive behavioral tracking and AI personalized therapy paths, whilst remaining 100% accessible without needing wearables. And in collaboration with NGOs and therapists, we'll give you hollow. Thank you. All right, next up, we have Team Cyrix, and here's a look at their work leading up to today's championship. Voice loss is not uncommon. Approximately 300,000 people lose their voice every year around the world. I think maybe a little bit more specifics in your presentation would be helpful just to head off any questions. What can I actually do with the software? What does that part look like? I don't think you need a lot of additional background to explain it and then go straight to your solution. We can show the people around the world who have lost their voice that they don't have to endure it anymore. Let's go styling. Yo, <laughs> I'm excited to see the results of all that hard work. Team Cyrix, your time begins now. His name is Takashi. He lost his voice due to throat cancer. He has to use his one hand when he's talking. Fast, please listen to his voice. <laughs> Voice loss is not uncommon. About 300,000 people lose their voice every year in part due to cancer. Syrinx vibrates your throat to create a sound that becomes speech when filtered through your mouth. We are using Microsoft wow. Azure to process and store your voice data. So it's Plus, actually you activating your, your vocal cords so that it comes platform. out of your mouth. Then, our web application automatically runs voice processing tools to generate these particular vibration patterns from voice recordings. We were first to succeed in bringing these vibration patterns to the market that sound this natural. Right now, we're conducting beta tests with our domestic users from NGO to make it easier to use. Our business model is similar to that of a hearing aid. We are planning to hook up with healthcare providers so that doctors can introduce our device to their patients right after their treatment. We hope to make a positive impact in the on the world like by showing that wearing lab speech coats. is a right not a <laughs> Thank you. Now, wrapping up the competition is Team Tremor Vision. Let's watch their journey to the championship. Current means of diagnosing Parkinson's and tracking disease progression are subjective and inaccessible. I'm curious what kind of testing you've done to kind of substantiate that claim. I would really focus on what's the problem, here's our solution, and here's how it meets. You know, overall, it was it was much better than last week's. We are bringing modern tools to old techniques to revolutionize the way Parkinson's disease is tracked and understood. All right, guys, let's get it. We got this. Let's go. <laughs> Bump it. Okay, Team Tremor Vision, let's finish strong. The clock starts now. Parkinson's disease, or PD, is the second most common neurodegenerative disease currently affecting 10 million worldwide. Although there is no cure, treatment can be effective if PD is caught early enough. A universal clinical test to detect PD tremors is known as the spiral test. However, these results are qualitative and are unable to quantify progress. That's why we built Tremor Vision. Things like messages from doctors, progress graphs, and spiral tests to take are displayed here. 
Our test returns a percentage of similarity to either healthy or PD spirals. Using Azure Custom Vision, we trained a machine learning model to classify spirals using physician annotated images, storing results and analysis using Azure's Fire API with HIPAA compliant schemas. The data collected enables researchers and physicians to gain new insights on the global burden of this mysterious disease. In the near future, we will expand our test suite and increase accessibility to our platform with additional language features and biometric authentication. Partnering with an EHR provider will enable access to Tremor Vision through hospitals and clinics based on a subscription plan. By innovating the way chronic illness is managed remotely, our platform modernizes the way we understand, detect, and track Parkinson's disease. Thank you. Judges, you now have an opportunity to ask the team's questions. Dewana, let's start with you. What would you like to ask Team Hollow? I'm curious how the app is able to adjust to the possibility of new normals for an individual. The behaviors that we're tracking over time can actually be monitored as their normal. So each normal gets classified to that individual compared to the larger trends. So it's sort of is like an anomaly detection, which can really figure out what's happening here. Got it. Thank you, Duana. Thank you. You're welcome. Brad, over to you to ask Team Syrinx a question. How does your solution compare to what you would regard as the best available tool on the market today? There is a conventional device that is used to produce voice in, in the American market and in, also in Japanese market. But those devices only generate uh, simple waveforms. On our device, we use voice processing tools to make a more complicated vi vibration uh, pattern fr right from the voice recording. That changes the voice tone dramatically. Okay, America, Penelope, what would you like to ask Team Tremor Vision? Your research on the standards of assessing the spiral drawings on graphical tablets, like a Wacom tablet, or either on with a mouse. I mean, does it matter that they hold the pen, or is it enough that they do it with their finger? There have been a lot of research with tapping into the pen, like data of angle, pressure, speed, and whatnot. But we thought that if we only focused on the tablet community, it wouldn't be accessible mm -hmm. to pretty much the larger Parkinson community. Thank you. Well, that concludes the competition. Thank you so much to our team. <laughs> okay. Now, judges will now cast <laughs> their luck. vote for the winner based Hardly on the judging seems criteria. like they had much of a chance, but uh, well, okay. We crown our champion. We want to take a minute to share some news that I think all students are going to want to hear. Corey? Thanks, Kate. Everybody wins. I'm excited to announce a portfolio of new opportunities for students to build tech skills and earn key experiences as they prepare for tomorrow's careers. First, we're announcing Microsoft Learn Student Ambassadors. This is a new peer community program focused on leadership through social responsibility and impact. Ambassadors get a first look at new Microsoft tech, contribute to open source, and receive mentoring from pros in the industry. Next. We're launching a new student hub on Microsoft Learn, where we offer free training for leveling up your tech skills. We partnered with UC Berkeley, Carnegie Mellon University, and Oxford to create new content based on their popular courses in data science, cloud development, and AI engineering. And here at Build, make sure you check out the Student Zone. We have InstaFluff, the welcoming and chill live coder on Twitch, <laughs> prepping students for code Insta challenges. InstaFluff? And Crazy Aunt Lindsay ah, from the Fab Insta Lab Fluff. on YouTube. And Crazy Bring Aunt Lindsay. And fun to our learning. God bless her. I also her. want to give a shout out and warm welcome living in the to basement our last 2020 class of years. Microsoft <laughs> interns who are joining us at Build for the very first time. Now back to the competition and the moment we've all been waiting for. Judges, it's time to announce our winner. Is everybody ready? Yeah! <laughs> they all voted for their own team. Oh, wait. Oh, it Hollow looks like won. Hollow won. And gentlemen, the winner of the 2020 Imagine Cup World <laughs> Championship <laughs> is Team Hollow from the University of Hong Kong. This is from Hong Kong. This is the uh, mental health diagnostic <laughs> tool using artificial intelligence. Oh, my God. Which also, of course, could be used oh by God. Facebook to aim marketing cereal at you, <laughs> depending on your mental illness. The rest of our 
Our show today, Brad, we're going to get stick with this for a little bit longer, if you don't mind, uh, uh, because I, I really would like to get to Scott Hanselman's presentation. Our show today brought to you by LastPass. We love our friends at LastPass. They support all of our news efforts. I hope you saw our LastPass presentation, our panel last week. It was fantastic with Steve Gibson, Andrew Keene, Jerry Buchelt from uh, the CISO at LastPass. We talked about the future of identity in the digital world. And, of course, LastPass is all about identity. Who is who and are they allowed to use your stuff? And that's what I mean in business. And that's why we use LastPass because LastPass is the way to make sure your IT department stays in control of who has access to your precious business resources, even when they're at home. And it makes it easy for employees to get their job done. It's the best of both worlds. LastPass can be deployed quickly in the midst of any event, like this recent shelter in place to ensure your business keeps running smoothly and every employee login is secure. We have our, our accounting team is at home. Our business operations are at home. Our continuity team is at home. Thank goodness they've got LastPass. Single sign-on manages employee access in a centralized view, so it always can be visible, so IT can see who has access to what, what's who's working on what, and where they are. Uh, enterprise password management, which, of course, has been always the core to LastPass's offering. It's still the best in the business. It allows uh, IT oversight and enforceable policies across all password-protected accounts. Multi-factor authentication. This is something relatively new to LastPass. We've always had two-factor, but now LastPass can even use contextual factors like geolocation, IP address, things like that, to make sure that the right employees are using the right resources. It's easy for employees, and it's great for business. You should be thinking about additional layers of defense beyond the password and LastPass does it all. They don't store the master password. They do not transmit the master password. In fact, as long as LastPass can't access your data, which they can't, hackers can't get it either. All encryption and decryption happens exclusively at the de device level before syncing. So uh, only users can decrypt their data using 256-bit AES, the best in the business. It's a seamless workflow for your employees, and it's secure for your business. LastPass can help make remote work simple and secure. It's why we use it. It's why you should use it too. Lastpass.com slash twit. If you want to know more, lastpass.com slash twit. Let's go back to Microsoft Build, the virtual conference. Is there anything going on right now, John? Or uh, And today, Here we I'm going to show you some really cool developer tools. Perfect timing. Uh, we'll see if anyone else Beautiful shows up. Uh, we're going to see all the things that we can build and all the fun that we can have putting all these different Microsoft technologies open source technologies, hybrid technologies. And I love it that together. he's sitting on a Sonoma County um, hillside. Actually, I did some fun stuff already. My friend, my friend Isaac Levin and I have hooked up Microsoft Graph. And is that where that is? Yeah. With, photos uh, from Sonoma County? Yeah. See this lighting right here? Got some Bliss. light effects. These are called the, uh, light effects. desktop for uh, Windows XP. If I go XP. into Teams and I set it to busy, see, I've got a busy light now. That talks to the graph, talks to this, which is really cool. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm having all kinds of fun just connecting he these things He has some together. Fred Armisen vibes. Let's I've always liked Scott see. a lot. He What's is a, a great educator for programming. He's, uh, he's uh, been at Microsoft for some time, Look at this. but he's very well respected. Yeah, he does have that kind of almost Mr. Rogers, really. Yeah. Yeah. He's a partner program Beep, manager boop, boop. at Microsoft. Boop. Boop. Look at that. <laughs> Fancy zone. <laughs> power toy. Windows power toy. Let's me rearrange things. And I've got preset regions, which is really, really great for developers. So that's pretty cool. It's my keynote deck. As you know, every developer is welcome. It's all about every developer. Uh, we have a handsome and friends today. I'm going to try to call some people, wake up some developers who may be sleeping <laughs> on an early uh, morning and uh, show you as many cool demos as I possibly can. Let's see who we can bother first. You know, Scott's actually, in, uh, Portland. Kayla, one of my favorite people. Let's you see, see him on Twitter all the time on Channel 9. He has three podcasts. He has his own YouTube channel. Hello. <laughs> ba, ba, ba. Ba, ba, ba. Ba, ba, and he ba, definitely ba, knows how to sound. fill time. Ba, ba, ba. He's also genuine, which I really like. They should put that in Teams. That is like a low <laughs> key bop. <laughs> they should put that in Teams. Da, 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 da. Hello. Hey, hang on, hang on. Virtual I'm background. Kind of doing a thing. It's a keynote. Quiet. I hear them. They're, they're wrestling or something upstairs. <laughs> Hi. Sorry to, uh, to wake you up. I know it's a little early for devs, and you know, most people geeks don't get up till like what noon. When do you, you get up at the crack of one, or what? Is, 
<laughs> the crack of one. <laughs> Depends on the day. Depends on the day. Well, thank you for answering my call. Uh, what is going on with your background there? That's a little extra. Oh, so <laughs> this is an ASCII no, representation of Azure running in Windows it's Terminal. ASCII. Oh, that is my God. awesome. Running ASCII in terminal. VMSS dashboard. Check it out as she moves. It. Her, it's that moving with That is ASCII, her. and it shows all the little Azure uh, data centers. Very cool. I will be setting that that's up later. A, nice. I think nice. it's a Teams feature. <laughs> thank you for showing me that. That's cool. It's following um, her. So... I have got that or she's uh, this using other a Facebook machine portal. that I'm trying to set up. It's like oh, half God. set up. And you know how when you get a Windows machine and you're just like, uh, you know, I've just set it up, right? You get any new machine, you just basically block out the whole day, six hour setup machine. Um, mm -hmm. And I've got like power toys on the thing. But Scott ran else, a uh, Fido like, get it BBS back that. in the day, as did I. And I think yeah. that's when we first so encountered each other. Like a script and then it'll just be like one and done. It'll be set up. I like a script. I like a script. All right, let me uh, let me switch over to that machine. Is that cool? Do a little PowerShell here. Yeah. All right, give me a sec. Bum, bum, bum. Da, da, da. This is the my, this is the very down home and and I okay. love it. Microsoft keynote for their Build Developer Conference. You're watching here. it live, Scott Hanselman, and a developer friend. Okay. And it's and you know unlike the previous presentation. This is clearly not pre-taped. This is clearly going on live, and I oh, love it. Cool. I think it's great. I, moved. I transferred yeah. the call with Teams. I'm learning how to do that. All right, cool. Nice. Realistic. Let me share my screen. So he's probably going to launch. Yeah, that's VS Code, it looks like. Okay, Maybe so it's... this is my new machine. Uh, it's basically got, like, Office and Power Toys. It's basically all I have on this computer. Power Toys? Okay. Power so we can get you some more dev tools a, like Terminal or VS Code. The past. All in one script. <laughs> yeah, I have like a notepad that was like full. I have like this list of like all the different stuff that I could potentially install. And it's just like go and then get it from the store and all that stuff. Go and yeah, so we actually have a package manager that you can use. And then it's just all in one line. And then it'll install everything at once. A Windows That's package nice. manager, you say? That's nice. I yes, use chocolate for this. It's called Winget. See, ah, what do you use? I would totally chocolate call it chocolate, okay, yeah. Cool. Winget. So um, let me do that. So I'm sharing my screen, and let me minimize mm -hmm. you for a second. Actually, no, I'm not going to minimize you. Nobody puts Kayla in a corner. I'm going <laughs> to you over here. There you go. In the other corner. Little yeah, in the other corner. Dirty dancing ref dirty reference. Love corner. that. Okay, cool. So <laughs> I remember that with Power Toys, the launcher is Alt Space. All right, cool. Mm -hmm. All right, so how do I use this package manager then? So you can actually just do a command line executable inside Power Toys Run. Ooh, okay. So start with the greater than symbol, oh. and then you can write win get install terminal, and that'll install the Windows terminal. That's nice. Oh, fantastic. This is something my, uh, that you know every other terminal? operating system has had for forever, and Oops. it's a really <laughs> nice thing to have a package manager. Impress me with your 3D, but if, oh, yes, I love an ASCII progress bar. <laughs> That's cool. Okay, that was it. All right, let me try this again then. So I'll run it again. Mm -hmm. This is available on GitHub Sweet. now. There you go. As the That's Windows okay. Package Manager CLI or Winget CLI. Look at that. I got terminal. That was Yay. cool. Right, Microsoft's cool. really Dang beefed up their right. terminal too. Cool. It's a right, lot so better this, than it like, used to be. It, you'll give me a whole script and I'll just run all the different stuff that I need to install. Right. Exactly. Okay. That's cool. That's cool. But you know, I have been a terminal stand forever. I've been talking about terminal. I tell everyone about terminal. Like you know me, like, I'm all about terminal my terminal stand. But it's been mm -hmm. zero point nine for like three years, right? <laughs> can, I, can I not install another preview of terminal, please? I'm not sure how many packages I mean, are didn't. available. This one is not a preview. Check the about menu. Oh, look at that! What? Whoa! Bear, 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 air horns. Yes. <laughs> is this one point oh, like, baby? Ready for enterprise? Like everyone installed this on your machines ASAP? It's a big improvement. Yeah, one point oh uh, came out today, so you can just go get the full nice. Windows terminal, no preview. Very Fi cool. Finally, a terminal for Windows. That's pretty sweet. <laughs> it's decent. Um, <laughs> I need to get like a launch slide or something and get my PowerPoint up. Yeah, I think we hid one in your machine. I can grab it for you if that's easier. Okay, you hid a file. Where did you put this file? Um, it might be easier if I just take over your machine and open it myself. Okay. Yikes. I'll give you control of my computer. <laughs> this is not oh. a recommended procedure, oh, by the way, cat. for people at hey, home. Oh, my God. <laughs> That's pretty cool. 
Hopefully, people okay. watching this. So, uh, developers okay. like this. Know this what is they're doing. Developers use this kind of uh, uh, sharing for uh, pair programming, which is uh, okay. great. Okay. So first thing I want to do, like let's a, go to your home directory. You're using something in Teams that does this as well. And then we can just open the file I have in GIMP. Dork.ping. Oh my God, Dork.ping. Mm -hmm. So hang on, the GIMP is a oh, it's a graphical app. GIMP is an open source, yep. the GNU oh, image processing. Work in, oh my goodness. <laughs> so. This is a preview of graphical applications knows working that, in way. WSL 2. Ooh. So we're running GIMP on the Linux side. That is pretty freaking cool. So this cool. is this okay. is an X so program, a graphical program mind. running on so Windows out of X. From my Windows file system to my what Linux does that mean? Where you put the file Initially, when they did the Windows sub sub subsystem for uh, uh, Linux, cool. so uh, WSL, it was command line only. It was text oh, only. But they've now gotcha. allowed you okay, allowed you to do... Right. So graphical programs like the GIMP. There's a, cool. of course, a ton right. of very powerful graphical okay, so programs available for Linux, and this is stuff. running on Windows um, with Linux and, uh, using WSL. Gotcha. This is that's pretty nice. Right um, not exactly. You could actually just use Teams for coding and using collaboration. Let me. So that's what they're doing right now. They're using Teams to do pair. Better. Programming. Pair all programming right, is kind leave. of all the rage I'll these days where two programmers will work together on the same project, on okay. the same code I'm put you over file. Here. All and right, that's so what go they're teams. about to do. Let's do that. Over to Teams. We have a keynote team. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. All right, so you want to actually start by calling the bot, getting its attention. So you can do at code conversations. Hey, and bot. then you can start hey, bot. writing a code snippet. So you can start with three back ticks, tick, and that'll tick, put you into tick. a code block, Ooh. and you can put something like console.writeline and then I a string of like Hello World. I actually really looked at Teams. It looks like Microsoft's something made like Teams that. look exactly like VS Code, run the code. which uh, will make developers very happy <laughs> you can hear him, right? or confused, one or the other. Yeah. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> no problem. I got... Oh. <gasps> Now we know That's it's live. Cool. His gardeners have Guys arrived. Mowing the labor's lawn. So console.writeline got output by the bot, and the bot did the code up in the cloud. Very cool. OK, yeah. that would be great for people to learn how to code. Yeah, exactly. So we just made a bot using the bot framework, and then this is actually running .NET Interactive inside of it to get the code to output. That's cool. It's a little meta, but I, I dig it. And I can see where <laughs> someone can meta. build on top of this and do all kinds of cool stuff. Um, yeah, exactly. This is pretty basic, though. I mean, so I might have hidden another file on your machine. <laughs> <laughs> I never should have let you ship me this computer. So you're going to want to go into your Linux file system on Explorer. Ooh, hang on a second. How do I have Tux in Windows Explorer? And this isn't even the pro Windows. I'm on home. Wow. Yeah, so WSL2 comes with a few different things. So you can have Linux open Explorer. You used to have to buy Pro to get WSL. Mm -hmm. And then since you're running Windows Home, Docker Desktop also works on WSL2. Remember, Microsoft really? is okay, now so shipping its own Linux Windows kernel Home as well. As we have, put on Visual Studio, Docker, WSL2, and just party, and I'm still on Windows Home. Yeah, exactly. Sweet. Ah, lead hacker. <laughs> Nicely done. OK, OK, so here's some C-sharp code. I'll just put that in the clipboard. Looks like All right, he's that's using in my clipboard notepad. now. What do I do with code conversations? <laughs> so mention the bot again, okay. get its attention, code and then conversations. Beep, beep, yep, beep. and then throw the code in there okay. into a code snip. Done. Run. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's thinking something's happening. Teams in teams is teams in. Ooh. Oh, that's cool. Okay, so all the all the console that right. I do wish we could read this. Like, uh, Me too. I, oh, I don't even think if we went full cool. screen, we'd right. be able I mean, to read it. Yep. Can cool. you try I'm that, impressed. John? Let's just like, see. I'm not like not impressed. It's just like console <laughs> right line, though. He said, I'm not not yeah, impressed. I mean, yeah, it's so tough to read. So the code I gave you has a format. One of the things included. we do whenever we're showing screens is we blow them up pretty big so, so that you can, you can read them. Just deck in a code snip, and then he's not even full screened on Windows for some reason. Okay, deck. So where I see the deck is the variable that the deck is held in. Cool. Yep. Got some more to run. Let's do it. Ooh, this your code bot is, is really awesome. interesting. Mm -hmm. It's kind of a REPL. It's kind of like a REPL for the kids. Ooh. .NET bot cards. I see you shuffle the deck and visualize the deck. So the Not format well tells shuffled. it how to show a deck. <laughs> <laughs> this would be great for folks to learn how to code. And when they're just getting Maybe started, Maybe not shuffled. Then you can, like, how about graduate that? into Visual Studio. That's super fun. This is a little meta. 
And it looks like it's kind of hacked together, but people can check it out at uh, aka.ms slash code conversations. That's really cool. Mm -hmm. Yep, new bot. New bot, I'm digging it. Okay, cool. Well, I appreciate it. You've given me all the things that I need to set myself up on this new machine with Windows Terminal, WSL2. I'm running on Windows. Yeah, he's posted all the code on uh, GitHub, which is kind of nice. And maybe get my terminal to be a little prettier. So even if you can't... Yeah, your terminal is lacking. Read his um, screen, at least. You can, <laughs> you can actually see this. Thank you for finding my terminal lacking. On the GitHub page. <laughs> Here, I'll show you mine so you can get some inspiration and get on my level. <laughs> <laughs> this is what my terminal looks like. Oh, uh, my God. It's very subtle. Never mind. <laughs> I appreciate no how offense. subtle it is. There's an understated grace to your terminal. I appreciate that. That's how I operate. All right. Thank you. You can go back to bed or coding or whatever you're doing. Thanks for hanging out. Appreciate it. <laughs> Thanks. It's not hangouts. It's teams. All right. See ya. All right. Bye. All right. Let me get off of this computer. So we're watching cool. Scott Hanselman's keynote at uh, Build. He's a great oh, developer nice. and... Uh, Definitely likes to Good knows stuff. how to talk to developers. I like that. So what we just demonstrated WSL, the new Windows terminal, terminal. and something terminal called Code Conversations, which you can see on their GitHub page, github.com slash code conversations. Because if you got it in the Windows store, it was automatically updated. And if you want to learn more or download it now, you can go to aka.ms slash terminal. Remember, it's fully customizable and it's open source, which is pretty sweet. Also, we saw the Windows subsystem for Linux. This is WSL2, now generally available. That's near-native Linux performance with a real Linux kernel, which is pretty amazing. We saw it integrated into Explorer, and we saw a preview of the GUI support. And this is interesting because you've got the general availability of WSL2, like start using it in your enterprise, update to Windows today, it's great. But if you want to get on the fast train, the innovation in the space of, of Windows subsystem for Linux continues. We're going to see a little bit of GPU support later in this, uh, in this conversation that we're having together. I really and again, turning Windows into Linux, honest to God. Cool <laughs> <laughs> but this is how you appeal to developers. And honestly, uh, most developers are going to either use Linux boxes as I am, or they're going to use a Mac. Soon, which is pretty sweet. This is why uh, I was able Microsoft to set up so my aggressively pursuing with this. help using the Windows Package Manager, WinGet. This is really cool because it's open source again. It's going to be hosted, the repository, in GitHub. Set up your machines in one script, support it, secure. And we're going to work with uh, folks like Chocolatey for an integration story. Nice. So you can take a look yeah. at that Chocolatey's at aka.ms slash Winget. Packages. So all kinds of cool That's stuff. That's probably the issue. I'm Setting sure up Winget machines. doesn't have a lot of packages Really, really yet. fast for the developer experience, getting into some code. And actually, before I get into some code, I feel like my... My theme is wanting. So let me change. I think it's my hysterical theme. that he's using it. Before I call XP, my next person, let's make it stuff. prettier. Ah, Mars. there we go. Ah, so Mars. we set up uh, some machines. Let's go and call uh, a friend from GitHub because what better place than GitHub to go and get involved with? This is code? to me, the this is one of the better developer, developer Ooh, presentations. <laughs> Ever Absolutely. Seen. They're actually doing something. Oh, it's not Maybe Mars, not. it's Seattle. Okay, GitHub, close enough. This would be a good idea. Like, <laughs> you know. is around. New Seattle on Mars. Yeah. Beep, New boop, Seattle. Bah. That's it. Micah sent me a Slack message yesterday. You're, you're going to learn uh, regular expressions? Is that. Hey. Uh, that is oh, correct. Scott? Yes. I've been meaning oh, to for a long your, time. There's a dog. There? What's going on? Yeah. That's Scott Forstall? I'm just chilling just with my dog no, outside Scott right Guthrie, now. This is Femto. And I've been inside for like weeks, it I'm feels sure. like. So we've been sitting under the tree and Without chilling out. Without Paul and Mary Joe to tell I, me. I who, need to go to my backyard. No, I guess that's not goo. Bad. I don't know I'm going to go to my is. backyard at some point because <laughs> you're right. Young. I feel like I've been in this room and changing the colors of the lights only simulates the outdoors so much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, vitamin D doesn't just come in a bottle. It does not. How, how are things going at GitHub? I know that you just uh, just acquired NPM, which is pretty sweet. Yeah, it's super exciting. It's been incredibly busy. I mean, we were incredibly oh, this excited is Nat and honored Friedman. to get that, to work with the, the NPM team. I mean, NPM the new GitHub is CEO, the, the Microsoft guy who took world. over GitHub. Uh, there's over a million oh, packages gotcha. in it. It gets over 75 billion downloads a month, which wow. just blew my mind. The it's young guy. incredible. And, uh, you know, we have huge overlap he was, between the uh, NPM and GitHub communities. He worked with Miguel de Acasa uh, at Simeon. Their source code on GitHub. 
And uh, so there's a lot of opportunity to a lot of open sure source stuff. And serve all one of the reasons I think and do a good job for Microsoft put him in charge of GitHub, GitHub is he's well respected like in the and open and source community. Which we're excited about too. And so, yeah, it's really fun. JavaScript is a big language ecosystem. So it's a lot of responsibility, but lots of good stuff we can do. For CEO a long Sam time, Ray. when people think about GitHub, they think about free. NPM you know, is free for people who aren't using the enterprise stuff. Uh, GitHub is the same way. But I've been paying my $7 for a private repository for GitHub for Thank years. Thank you. It's free now. Uh, well, <laughs> you can keep doing that if you want. It's That's free now. This but is now you're huge, by the way. More stuff. What, what is the. Yeah, I mean, the model in the past for GitHub was pay for privacy. So all the public right. repo stuff was free, but then if you wanted to do any private work, you had to pay for it. And we made the decision, actually, it's something we've wanted to do since before we even completed the acquisition of GitHub, but uh, we made the decision to make GitHub free for everyone, that, basically. This is so really great. Now uh, awesome. anyone can create private repos and private organizations and add an unlimited number of people to them for private work without paying anything. And then of course, if you're if you're a big company, if you're an enterprise and you need really advanced uh, compliance and security, you pay for that, that still costs money. But uh, you know, for startups just getting started or students working in school or even you know, medium-sized companies who don't need to pay for support or that sort of thing, they can just use GitHub. And we want GitHub to be accessible to developers in every country and every place on earth for any purpose. And so this is a big step in that direction. We're pretty excited. Very cool. Give me a second. I want to go. I'm going to go in my backyard because this so is so people too who awesome. uh, were, somebody in the chat was saying, "Where are Paul <laughs> and Mary Joe?" They're actually going to be on this stream. They're going to follow after. Uh, I think uh, Scott Guthrie will follow Scott Hanselman, and after Goo, I, uh, I believe it'll be Paul and Mary Joe around 11 o'clock today. So. Uh, they're there busy. They're working for Microsoft yeah, you know, today. That's why they're not yeah, joining us on the stream. You know, it's me and way, Micah. If you're on your phone and you're going into your backyard, GitHub mm -hmm. now has a mobile app for iOS and Android <laughs> that you can use that we just put out. Mm -hmm. I don't recommend. Ago. And uh, it's pretty cool. Have you tried it? Interesting. So I could sit back here. I got my hammock situation. No, and I could do, what, do, I I don't could code like or do pull requests. Yeah, I mean, actually, they're an acquired taste. Our thesis they're when precarious. we built it was yeah. that people would use it to kind of keep track of but their notifications. Maybe, maybe you're just too light. <laughs> their inbox. And we were really <laughs> That's really the problem. If you were a larger fellow like me, so once you're in the hammock, you, it's pretty solid. It's okay, once you're in it, maybe. And, uh, <laughs> but the process yeah, to get super, in and out funny, is right? just uh, people love frightening. To basically, make sure they're not blocking their colleagues. So if someone's out there and they're trying to get a PR merged, and you can review it for them. It turns out people want to get that done, even when they're on the go. Even if that means you're not really on the go. For, maybe for a keynote, is just in your backyard. For a developer but conference, this is the most geeky ever, and I'm it thrilled. It's that exactly how it should be. Like right now, I can do that. In my yeah, it's right right now. It's it's it's, it's a little bit of an ad for the company, of, uh, but not as much as it usually is. Uh, like I said, it's, I think it's just about a month old. That's cool. Another thing that I uh, really been appreciating about GitHub was this the sp GitHub sponsors. You know, like there's so many people. Open source is powered by volunteerism, and but to your point, people you know people want freedom. Like people want to want to eat. It would be amazing if people could get paid for the work that they're doing. Yeah, I think that's right. I mean, um, there's a lot of people who, for whom open source is a labor of love, and mm -hmm. there's people who get paid full time to do open source. Uh, but there's a lot of people who are doing all this work that is a public good. It goes into a commons that benefits the whole world. And sometimes you want a way to say thank you and a way to actually give back to those people who are giving so much. And so we rolled out GitHub sponsors in November. So like just less than six months ago. Oh, this is a good idea. As a way for you to contribute money to the people. If you have a the project you like, you, you don't have to send that. Go out to Patreon to support it. In the work that you do. I do support and, a number uh, of open source projects uh, on Patreon, and it's kind of a pain. And, maintainers and you know the Patreon's taking a pretty big people who tell us exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. now to make rent, which is a pretty crazy, actually, thing that happened pretty quick. I think so it's a great idea. looking forward to continuing to see that grow. So if you're enabling people to get paid, you're enabling people to do work mobily if they want to, what other things could someone potentially do when they, because GitHub is this massive source repository. I want to jump into the code and start working on it right away. Yeah, actually that's, uh, you know, I think we've all experienced this. You, if there's a project that you want to contribute to, or maybe there's something you want to change about it or improve, 
you know, the first step is always, okay, I've got to get my dev environment set up. I've got to clone the repo and, and get it building locally and that sort of thing. And sometimes that can be a huge set of tasks and a big kind of piece of friction that even prevents you from contributing to an open source project or to something at your company. And so something pretty amazing, combining the power of GitHub with the power of Visual Studio Code, and it's called Code Spaces. Mm. And what we'll do is we basically put a button on the repo that says code, you click the code button. In the background, we'll spin up a virtual machine. We will hydrate a container in it, which contains the entire development environment for wow. that repo. And then we'll open a new browser tab with VS Code oh, running in this. the browser. And you literally are connected to that backend container environment in just a few seconds. You are now a developer on that project. It is so you amazing. could do this, uh, Mike, on an iPad. Because all you need really is a terminal. I'm going to put you down because I want to see this. I want to actually. Appreciate you can check it out. Unfortunately, it doesn't support the languages I like. Oh my god! What happened? He Sorry, dropped Mike. his uh, into his Mike Lego. Mike <laughs> Town was attacked. Right, let me put you here. Look at Mike's all he's got. He's got a stream actually, deck. Let me switch. Let me switch back to this machine. Hang on one second. <gasps> That's the microphone I have normally. There you are. Until I switch to this one for. So code spaces. I feel like I need to see this to believe this. He's pretty what, what adept at manipulating his uh, environment. I gotta say. Firstborn. Well, what do you need? Code spaces, unfortunately, is only in beta right now. Talk to the expert. So do you know uh, Allison from Sports Spender? JavaScript, yeah, Java, C yeah, Sharp, yeah. Ruby, Swift, Dart, Python. On PHP, C, and C++, Go, Kotlin, and Rust. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm going to put Lisp in because it needs to support Lisp. More dog, just one more time. Oh, actually, yeah, closure okay. would be nice. She's run away. Oh, oh baby. Oh, that is a cutie. <laughs> All right, I'll see you later. All right, see ya. I am now on the Code Spaces wait list. Now, using an AirPod instead of a uh, Surface a so uh, Platter, as we about. call the <laughs> Surface uh, <Surface> Platter. <laughs> yeah. Uh oh. Oh my comes gosh! A small child. That's a funny bit. This is the new thing. Panos Panay had was interrupt interrupted, and I put that in air quotes by his child carrying his Surface during his Surface presentation last week. <laughs> I think it's oh, a hey setup. Oh, huh? yeah. oh, I'm sorry. I didn't I mean to get right. you uh, I love mobile. it that they're featuring female <laughs> no developers. No worries. That's I'm just great. taking little Olive here on a walk. Have you met Olive? <gasps> I have not. More dogs. Femto, Please be a dog. Either that or a child. Hello. Oh, it's a, hey, it's a dog. Say hi. Yeah, developers oh, don't I have know. time for children. You are such a big, scary <laughs> dog. Uh -oh. It would have been funny if it was a turtle. Security dog Olive sees something. Olive is a dog. I know. Name, isn't she's she's always trying to make sure the house is sure. well protected. Very, very what nice. What can I do for you? Well, I was just talking with Nat. So Nat's in his backyard with his dog. And he said that you knew all about um, GitHub Mobile and then mm -hmm. Code Spaces. That explains but why she's on a mobile, phone. So maybe you could show me GitHub Mobile. Aha, uh -huh, right yes. Yeah, absolutely. Let me go ahead. So and she's like head of the Code Spaces fact, project, is what the other guy was saying. Oh, interesting. Mobile, cool. Awesome. Code Spaces is a great idea. Uh, so of course, there's other, lots of people doing this, is Repolit, which I've used before. So that eventually, basically allows you to code. Uh, in this case, using Microsoft's uh, Visual Studio Code um, in a terminal. So you're running a Docker uh, container on GitHub with all of your development tools in there, and that means you can access it from anywhere, from even a low or slow machine or even an iPad. And get, and I presume, and get your coding done. So that's that's really cool. So for my team's repo, I can check on issues. I can comment on pull requests and just stay connected even when I'm on the go, like when I'm walking Olive. That's cool. Nat was saying that It's great really that Microsoft's like really using GitHub uh, in, a, from, uh, in a creative way and devices. making it free. I think it's fantastic. Yeah. I mean, if if I'm waiting in line at the grocery store, at least I can I be can productive do my and commits. comment on some pull requests. <laughs> well, to be clear, from the grocery store. because you like doing that. I would never want to make sure that you have like, You can always work Boundary everywhere. You don't setting have to people. work if you don't want to work. <laughs> Please, Boundary don't. Setting. Yeah, Please do nice not flexibility make your because commits. I definitely like taking a midday break and, and maybe doing some grocery shopping to get <laughs> out of the house you know, once every two weeks, of course. So if once Olive has successfully chased away the bad guys, can uh, can you would you mind going back inside and showing me code spaces? Absolutely. Let me get her all settled and I will hop right back on. All right, cool. This is cool. All right. I did not know that you can share. We're watching uh, Scott Hanson. Share mobile. That was cool. Uh, and this is the build keynote, the virtual build, 
and then I need to. And honestly, to if they go, go back to the see. old format, I'll be on, I'll be upset. This is so yeah, much, this is much more better. interesting. Of course, they're lucky because Scott is a very adept presenter. He uh, he first became famous. He wrote a diabetes program for the Palm Pilots. Hey, there. Hey, there you yeah. are. All of good. She is good. She made a run for a bird. She loves to chase them. So I kind of had to grapple her back into the house. But she's got a chew bone and she's happy now. All right, cool. <laughs> so let me... Uh, Why don't, don't I, I believe any of that? I want to see... I'm right. Spaces. Can I do this? <laughs> Thank uh, you. <laughs> is there actually <laughs> coffee yes, in that can. mug? Uh, the great part is I can just walk you through it from here. All right, cool. Let me All right, let's go full screen, John, because I'd love to be able to and at I'll least try to see what she's doing here. You're watching yeah. uh, the uh, Build Keynote uh, Twit News All right, Special. Cool. All right, so go this is to a new aka.ms. AKA beta product. SH on board. SH on board. SH Joining on board. your startup. Yes. All right, so, so this I is onboarding instructions. Here we go. Oh, the olive uh, track. Install, install. Uh, I mean, okay. Get the source. There's a lot of... Oh, and install. Oh, I like oh that. There's that a lot of this, vintage this a Windows 95 program. I don't really have window. this kind of time, but even worse, this is like a day worth of startup instructions. Oh, come this on. is real typical, it, it, though. Yeah, I've done this. It's very typical. Um, Did it yesterday. But with code spaces, we've got a much easier way now. Oh, so okay. scroll all the way up. Mm -hmm. You've got that green code button. So click on it. And then open in code space. Ooh. Oh, that's yeah. nice. Okay. So everything's that. already right. pre-installed. So yeah. Here, yeah. It's a Docker are, container so with everything pre-installed. Building it for you right now. Okay. Uh, and it's going to take care of all now, those instructions. I'm not sure. Uh, I was hoping you could access this in a terminal. It looks like space. maybe you have to do it in a browser, and but that's okay. And we're going to connect you to it in the browser. Yeah, it's a browser. So basically one button is all you need to get started. So this is like a development-specific container in the cloud. And oh, here we go. This is Visual Studio Code. Yep. Looks familiar, right? It does, but I'm in my browser. This is cool. All right. It says opening remote. Yep. It's still got a little bit of setup to happen here. Obviously, you know, building a, a code space takes a little bit of time, well, but, but far less take... than all that setup. Certainly different between taking seven hours to set up a machine from scratch. What are we when we're here complaining about like, oh, this took like 20 seconds to set up an entire <laughs> environment, like oh, unacceptable. This is amazing. So it looks like it's done. Yeah, it's done. You can go ahead and close that creation log and okay. we can reclaim some space. All right. And themes are always super cool to have, right? This should look like your VS Code. Mm -hmm. All right. So go to that gear icon and we're going to turn on preferences sync. Turn on preferences sync. Yeah. All right. Turn it's in on. in preview. So okay. they ask. Let's just sync settings. All right. So, so he's taking settings. his local VS Code preferences and settings and copying oh, them to the container. Yep. We remember your GitHub login, so all you have to do is select it. This is the first and time. And replace local. All right. Cool. Now, normally okay. you have to have a Microsoft Syncing account for that. It. It'll oh, be right. nice if, it, if it's this just a GitHub theme. account. That would really yeah. be great. Isn't that great? This is cool. It's very interesting. This is very familiar because this is the, stuff, the way I have it set up. Mm-hmm. Exactly. It should feel like home no matter where you're accessing it from. Ooh, I like this. Okay. Great. So why don't you open any file? Uh, public has a map.js. Um, that's our main one. And you can see all the colorization. Wow. Um, everything you need to get it's started. It's nice and snappy, too, which oh, is great. And the code coloring has been updated because the theme has a certain thing. It, it really is my Visual Studio. Wow. Yep. I love it. So also, do you want to have a party? Ooh, you know about my aliases. I do. So why don't you go ahead and open up an integrated terminal? I usually do that with control shift P and then type in terminal. Okay. And I also use control oh. tilde to bring up the terminal as well. So control awesome. shift P. Yeah. So everything is exactly where it should be. Okay. So here I am in my terminal. All right. You ready right. for the party? Let's party. Uh, yes. No. All right. So this means my dot files Diane came Kat. in as well. Like it knows me. It really knows me. 
That's his. Yep, that's his. It's uh, just how you like that's his it. His dot files. That's cool. That is really cool. Okay. So if it knows me, then does it know about like my PRs and all the different stuff that I work on? This is a truly yeah, portable so uh, workflow, which is really the, great. Uh, it means anywhere PR you can do a browser, including a Google Chromebook, um, iPad. Any extensions here? Go to GitHub. All right. A Linux box. You'll you have full access all, to your. Set you don't up. see I put a little surprise in there for you with Dependabot because I know oh. you love Dependabot. I freaking love Dependabot. Dependabot is such a joy. Yeah. Could you tell me a little bit more about what it does? <laughs> to be honest, I put it in there. It's either I know an adult typer it, or it protects it. you with your <laughs> dependencies. Dependabot but I'm is like a person that works for you that watches your dependencies. And it, and it will go Formal, into pull requests. Fortunately, so like here, it's the Dependabot went yeah, you and noticed it. that the MongoDB <laughs> dependency bumped from one version to another. And what I love about it is it will go and pull the release notes out. It'll basically do an inclusive, you know, uh, like I want everything from this version to that version. And it copy pastes it in. You can even go and see each individual commit between oh. these two versions. And oh, it's lovely. And then you can go into and, and I want to pen to merge directly inside <laughs> of, of VS Code inside of Code Spaces. Bro, do you yep. even depend a bot? Basically, <laughs> like you're working local, but from a browser. That's so awesome. This okay, is well, really wait a second. Great. If I'm working I, I local from a browser, would presume that that container is persistent. Yeah. So go over to your debug. Oh, that's uh, yeah. I would hope so. All right. And just go ahead and click the Run button, just or you can it. use any of your shortcuts. Okay. But this is going to be like localhost so, 5000 or something. How is that even possible? Yeah, how so is that So what possible? we do is we actually have a port forwarding service that is going to take oh. that localhost oh. on the code space localhost and 8, actually forward that to your local browser. No. So if you go ahead and open that. That's so I, some open strong voodoo. Yep. Go ahead and follow that link. That's very cool. That seemed impossible. That Whoa. is really cool. That's kind of important exactly because you need to be able to... Reports. Look at and your then work. You'll get to see, see the Olive Tracker for real. Nice. So, unfortunately, Olive hasn't really been to the Midwest or the East Coast. <laughs> so like pretty much stuck in Seattle. Seattle. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, don't oh, zoom in too close. Is. We don't want to tell don't know her exactly your privacy. Like you'll get a cute little photo. Oh. oh. I that like so Olive cool. Tracker. I need I one. I want a Henry and Mizzy awesome. Tracker. Henry and Mizzy Tracker. This is wonderful. So let's go ahead and close this and switch back to our code space because we are going to live share. I'm going to close this tab? Yep. Close that tab and go ahead and stop debugging. All right. This is a really great demo. Cool. I am very impressed. Back. All right. I've signed up so for go this, to the live share extension. Right now it's a uh, pre-release. It's invitational. Yes. All right. Cool. Perfect. And there, my name is all lit up. So you should just be able to invite me directly. Okay. Invite. Starting so this was that session. pair of programming I was talking about where they're awesome. Going to work I got your notification. This is something that's been around for Visual a while Studio in Visual Studio, which is what I'm on, mm -hmm. and I'm joining right now. As you it's can nice see. that you can use yeah. VS Code with Visual Studio, so the paid it is product. Visual Studio. In GitHub, VS yeah. Code's yeah. the open the source, electron-based. Well, I'm on free Visual version, Studio connecting to your code space in the prefer. cloud through Live Share. I see. So anyone can use the tool that makes them happy. I'm in my browser. Oh, and you're actually selecting stuff, and you can see my wow. selection as well. Look at that. Absolutely. See, cool. I'm going to use Live Share all through this whole thing today. This is fantastic. Yep, it's a great way to collaborate, and we're as long so as happy your to enable people connecting. to really yeah. connect virtually, even when we have to be apart in physically. Very cool. I think I actually have a Good slide on, on this. Code Spaces, and we can learn about how people can get this right away. Awesome. Right Here away. I signed up. Yeah. So if you'd like to try out the experience, well, you've already tried it out. But if you have any friends who want to try it out, they should sign up at that link right there for the private preview for our GitHub integration. But if you don't want to wait for I private requested preview, early you access. can actually try out Visual Studio Code Spaces right now. And so GitHub version is where you have to wait, but Visual Studio, you don't have to wait. Well, you can sign up for it's all on GitHub. Yeah, if you already paid for Visual Studio, which is Microsoft's big boy IDE and uh, for .NET, 
they of that course let nice. you in right away. But for those of cool. us using the free well, thank VS you very much code, for letting me pull you away we have to request early long. access. But it's a really that's a really she cool. Gets sick tool. Of me being I'll be playing with that a lot. <laughs> awesome. I'll catch you later. See ya. A really nice way to play with a, uh, a GitHub project because, <laughs> or work in a GitHub project because. It's, you know, it's ephemeral. You're not Most messing up your machine, installing a bunch of dependencies, like and we've all done that. And well. it just well, screwed everything. Fire. Yeah, actually, yes. That happens to me all the time, installing a bunch oh, of stuff. Oh, wow. Sneaky Scott Anselman. Did you catch that? That We're was watching. clever. Uh, <laughs> That's a good background. Geez. Drank too much soda. <laughs> oh, let me set that up really quick so I can go make a cup of coffee. <laughs> All right, let me change my theme, too. I'm feeling very Visual Studio-y. He seems to like those Visual retro Studio themes. Visual purple. No, it's too purple. No, no. Oh. Ah. There we go. That's nice. Oh, he's lit his room purple, too. Mm -hmm. Very so nice. So we saw yeah. all the things that we can do in the browser, but we also saw how uh, Code Spaces is powered by Visual Studio Code. So let's take a look at what is in there. Uh, Visual Studio Code has over 21,000 can't really move that window. It has over 21,000 <laughs> extensions. Right? You can develop locally, remotely, I or in the browser, the as we just saw. Plus, One of the best parts is that you can synchronize all of your settings it's great. and it's, all you of your You can use VS Code for almost anywhere. any language. So There's extensions for every language. It's your great. The way that you work is the way that you work. For, yeah. Synced to the cloud. VS Code's quite nice. I wish it weren't electron-based because that makes it now, heavy, Studio, but uh, it works very nicely. It really is good, and I use it on Alexa all the time. You've noticed that it improves all the time. Every quarter, there's a new version with new improvements. We saw IntelliCode, so you've got AI-assisted IntelliSense, uh, Live Share, being able to collaborate across versions of Visual Studio with Live Share, GitHub integration, we'll see some cool stuff with that. Remember also that version 16.6 uh, is out today, version 16.7 Preview 1 is also available today. You can find a new Git experience, brand new Git experience, directly integrated into Visual Studio 2019, which is fantastic. The other thing that's worth pointing out is that .NET Core 3.1 continues to march on. So many people are using it, and it is in long-term support. That means that you can do work, start a new project on .NET Core 3.1 now, and you will be supported for We're going to wrap as soon as he wraps this, because we do want to get to iOS support, today. But Windows I think this has been a great presentation. I've really enjoyed it. Different this versions is the best part, yeah. sure. Not yeah. affecting each other, as well as self-contained EXEs. So and we do want to thank LastPass, our sponsors, for all of our folder, Twit events and Twit news. And, of course, our studio sponsor as well. The modern web UI for giving us with the wherewithal. LastPass.com slash Twit. You've got to use the best password manager out there. Oh, he's very purple. Actually, you know, let's give Maddie a call. She knows all about Visual Studio development, and she can probably help me with this idea that I have. I'm a little less interested in Visual uh, Studio because it is a proprietary great. tool. It is for right. .NET, uh, and so I think maybe this is a good time for us to uh, cut away, though. Uh, if you are interested, of course, Microsoft Build uh, continues on for the next two days. Uh, as soon as Scott Hanselman is done, I think Scott Guthrie is supposed to come on, and then uh, Paul and Mary Jo will uh, wrap the presentations for the morning. So there's a lot more you can go uh, to uh, watch on Microsoft's own streams. Uh, if you want to do it, thank you so much to LastPass for giving us the wherewithal. I think it's been a great hour and a half spent. Satya Nadella kicked us off with his usual impenetrable vision statement. <laughs> uh, Still I don't trying know. to figure out what that meant on his wall there. I don't know if I learned. Yeah, we don't his know what that RGV... 2CW. We still don't know, but I'm going to guess that's some sort of love code, but I, I don't know. Somebody said it could be an Easter egg. Um, it is definitely an Easter egg. Revealed, it yeah. is definitely an Easter egg. There's no doubt about that. He also announced uh, a, a new Microsoft uh, <laughs> attempt to unify their uh, older, their legacy code bases called Project Reunion, bridging Win32 and UWP, kind of snuck it in. I'm sure we'll learn a lot more at Build uh, about that. This is uh, the idea: is it is a single platform, a single tool, allowing uh, all developers to develop for all versions of Windows. And I think the real point of it is to get developers who have Win32 code out there running on. Uh, you know, in businesses and so forth, to, to at least move it to Project Reunion so that Microsoft can move on from Win32, which is a historically insecure and difficult platform. Yes?
Two live updates. One is to let everyone know out there that there is now a Twitter account at RGV2CW. <laughs> but also... Of course it, there is. <laughs> it is the word devs encoded in Base64. Base64 devs. That's that's the answer. And thank you to at RF... Or excuse me, R4MONES on Twitter for letting me know. That, that is fantastic. Uh, wow. Base 64. So if he did three of them, then it would be a, a Easter egg for Scott Ballmer. Developers, developers, developers. This is, this is, a, I'm following this Twitter account immediately. And of course the, the image from the Twitter account is <laughs> the, the RGV 2CW on Satya Nadella's shelf right next, right below a succulent. Uh, that is, that is fantastic. That is a really clever Easter egg. And, uh, and uh, whoever thought, of course, Base 64, what, of course, that had to be. Um, we also saw uh, the, um, uh, uh, and I've already forgotten the name of it, the, the awards ceremony for the. Oh, yeah. What did they call that? <laughs> unforgettable uh, awards for the student uh, innovators who created the something cup. Uh, and Was it Platforms Cup? <laughs> no, the Innovators Cup, the. Innovation Cup, the Imagine Cup. That's it. Imagine the Cup. Ima Thank, Thank you, you John Slania. The Imagine Cup. We saw the winners, uh, Team Halu, that will never be heard from again. We also, which that well, it's interesting. It was a mental health platform uh, used to diagnose mental health issues using artificial intelligence. Students from, I think, it was the University of Washington. Uh, and then finally, uh, a very fun presentation from Scott Hanselman, which I, I think I will continue to watch uh, when I get home tonight because he is so good at presenting the Imagine Cup. That's the name of it. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. Thanks to LastPass. Thank you, Micah Sargent, for getting up early. Don't leave. iOS Today is coming up as soon as we can move to the uh, other studio. Thanks for joining us for this uh, Twit News special, Microsoft Build 2020 Keynote. I'm Leo Laporte for Micah Sargent. Have a great day.